Today we are talking about transferring, the transfer portal, how transferring works in college sports, my experience with transferring. If you're interested in anything related to that process, this video is for you. What's up everybody, what's going on? My name is Max Brown, former quarterback at USC and Pittsburgh, current football analyst, and hence my little intro right there, former quarterback at USC and Pittsburgh to make that transition, that obviously means I had to transfer. And while a lot in the transferring world has changed since then, I started the process in October of 2016 and landed somewhere in January of 2017. A lot's changed since then, but a lot has stayed the same. And what motivated me to make this video is I actually switched up apartments. Those of you guys that have watched these videos a lot notice the different setup for me. I switched apartments and came across this guy. Good old whiteboard action. This whiteboard was a key piece in my transferring process. Sounds like Max, get out of here. What are you talking about? We got, we got technology. What are you doing with the whiteboard? But it helped me plan out my transfer process, which I'll get into that. This video is for two types of people. The first is a football fan who's interested in the transfer process, or you follow my content over the years and you're just interested in how I went from USC to Pitt. The second group of people, and even more important, is if you're someone who has no idea who I am, you stumbled across this video and you are thinking about transferring, you're in the process of transferring, and you feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because there's not many resources out there to help with the transfer process, I'm hopeful that this video can be a resource to you. But I'm going to start this video by walking through why I transferred and the steps I took to transfer. I'm going to sprinkle in some tips and advice throughout that, and then I'm going to circle back and walk through some do's and don'ts through how I see it. Everyone's transfer story is going to be different. There is no cookie cutter way of doing this. My story is going to be unique in that some of the elements are not going to be applicable to everyone, but I am confident that whether you're at the D1 level or D3 level, that you can pull from bits and pieces, especially on the strategic side, and implement it into your own journey. Diving right into it. I mentioned that I went to USC. I landed there as a five-star recruit, the number one quarterback in the country, had a bunch of, uh, bunch of hype, and when I arrived at USC, the idea of transferring was like worst possible case scenario. I felt like if I transferred, that meant that I failed, which is harsh, but I say that because I think the stigma around transferring has certainly lessened in a good way over the past seven to 10 years since I was uh, since I was in the process. I went to USC, was there for four years, waited my turn, was a captain on the 2016 team, started the first three games, ultimately got benched for Sam Darnold, a buddy of mine, hell of a player. But the second I got benched, I knew right then and there I had to transfer. And I just brushed over four years of events and stories, but they're out of the scope of this specific video. I knew at that point I was a redshirt junior. I only had one more year. I still had big time NFL aspirations. And I said, I got to get somewhere where I can play. Well, I got benched on September 23rd, 2016, I believe it was, or maybe September 21st. I took about three weeks to kind of process the whole thing. All the while, I'm still going to practice, was feeling down in the dumps, wasn't pumped on life, was playing scout team quarterback as a captain, which that that's not the, the the most fun thing, but I wasn't about to be a dude that, that that quit or threw in the towel or anything like that. And so I processed it for about three weeks. And then when mid-October came, I walked into the compliance office, which was ironically right across the hall from the QB meeting room. And I told the head compliance guy that I wanted to transfer and what is the first step in doing that. Now that's probably the first area where I'm going to be more unique than, than other guys. For most players, that conversation happens with their coach, position coach or head coach before it goes to compliance. For me, I had a good relationship with the compliance director. I didn't really want to go to my coach at that point. And so I just stopped in the office and, and asked him what the process was. He let me know that the first step was to get a permission to contact other schools form completed. And nowadays the terms are different. Nowadays that means entering the portal. And while the terms are different, it still operates in the exact same way. Back when I was transferring, permission to contact schools literally meant your athletic department sent out an email to every school in the country that you had approval to contact or approval to talk to and they sent a notice saying Max Brown, quarterback, redshirt junior, grad transfer, eligible immediately or whatever the notice says. I don't know exactly what it says but the cadence of how that works is the exact same. Nowadays it's the portal where you put your name in the portal. Well that's just an area that notifies all the schools that hey this kid's looking to transfer. It's the same mindset just different technicalities, if that makes sense. And the big thing then was that even though I had my permission to contact schools approved, I could still 
practice with USC. And just like nowadays where different head coaches handle the transfer portal in different ways, some coaches say, hey, the second you enter the portal, you're out. Other coaches, a little bit more forgiving. My story was a little bit unique for, for a few reasons because one, everyone knew, including my head coach, that I had to transfer. Two, USC needed me on the team because they needed another quarterback. In the event that Sam went down, they needed a, a capable guy ready to go. But as I say that, I think a big kicker there is I was at SC for a long time and I had earned my stripes. There was a level of respect, and I say this humbly, but there was a level of respect that I had earned within the program and within my head coach that people were willing to help me transfer. And I was fortunate in that regard, but it was a byproduct of how I approached the previous four years at USC. And so that's maybe tip one right there is if you are transferring, don't ever burn bridges. You never know where former coaches are gonna land, whether it's your position coach or a different coach on staff. Coaches get fired and hired like no one's business and they have been throughout their entire career. So they have relationships with other coaches. Never burn bridges and know that when you do transfer, oftentimes the coach that you're going to is gonna call a coach of where you're coming from and say, what kind of dude is he? Does he work hard? Does he treat people right? And even though you're leaving a scenario, oftentimes who you are as a player and as a person is gonna travel with you. But backtracking a little bit, I met with compliance, I said, Max, this is what you have to do. I then practiced for a few days and then my head coach came up to me and said, Max, you mind swinging by my office real quick? We'll have to chat or something like that. I went into his office and he let me know, hey Max, I understand you wanna transfer Transfer. And at that point, to get my permission to communicate with other schools or contact other schools, I needed my head coach's approval or signature. And so right there, one of the big elements was I wanted to get approved to go wherever I wanted in the country, especially in conference. Most of the time, schools will not let you transfer in conference. For me, I wanted the ability to go in conference. I was willing to go wherever, but I wanted the ability to go in conference in the event that that was the best case for me. And low key in the back of my mind, Back in the day, I was when Cal had taken Davis Webb, the, the transfer quarterback, and he had crushed it. And I had some coaches at Cal, so in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I gotta let Helton uh, approve me to go in conference because I might go to Cal. That, that, that could potentially be an option. But luckily for me, my head coach approved that. He said, Max, you can transfer wherever you want in the country. And well, at that time, it was a little... Uh, little weird between me and Coach Helen, just with getting benched and whatnot, there still was a a level of respect he had for, for, for what I was about. So he was willing to have me go wherever I wanted in the country and he allowed me to communicate with schools at that point. So once I got that approved, my mindset right there was I wanted to take the next month to see which schools reached out to me. That was a valuable data point of if a school reached out to me, man, that meant they, they needed a quarterback. And sure enough, funny enough, Pitt was one of those schools. And I remember doing my scout team quarterback duties as a captain at SC, doing my best to stay ready, coming off the field at practice, taking off my USC uniform, walking out of the locker room to a phone call from Pat Narduzzi. That was mentally trippy of playing for one team, but actively turning the page and gearing up for what the next chapter would be for me. I knew the clock was ticking for me. I didn't want to waste any time. Most people, right, would have, Max, finish out the season, just get through December, and then we'll worry about transferring from there. I didn't want to do that because I wanted to get into a school and participate in spring ball the next year. And I was aware of the fact that a lot of schools out there are semester schools. And if you're a semester school, yes, your spring ball might be in March or April, but if you're not enrolled in school by in January, like January 3 was when Pitt started, when, when semester school started, if you're not enrolled by then and you're not taking classes, then it doesn't matter if you figure everything out by March, you will not be able to participate participate in spring ball because you didn't enroll early enough. And for that very reason, that's why a lot of transfers, most transfers happen in May, June, July, in the summer. Most guys don't have their ducks in a row to make that jump mid-year. So maybe that's lesson two right there. If you are watching this video and you know transference, transference coming, I'm not saying, hey, don't be all in on something, but just be wary of what's out there. Be wary of the steps that you're gonna need to take and remember that it always takes longer than you think and don't get blindsided by a, oh, I wanna make this decision, but the deadline's in two 
two weeks. That happens all the time, seen it a, a bunch. Getting enrolled in January allowed me to have a whole spring ball with a new offensive system. It allowed me to be around the guys. I ended up getting voted captain at Pitt. That would not have happened if I wasn't there in January because I wasn't able to get to know the guys. I just think it's important to take advantage of that offseason time and not be in limbo, maybe trading on your own, going back home. No, take advantage of every month that you have. So from there, we're talking what, mid, mid November then? That's where the good old whiteboard comes in. That's where this guy comes in. On a Sunday and probably, actually it's probably early November, probably around Halloween, I spent a Sunday and went over to my brother's house for about six or seven hours. We researched every division one school in the country, just a Google search, and we wrote out whether or not that school would be a viable transfer option. And it's 2021 now. You can get a lot of information from a Google search. And this might be where my story is a little bit unique, but being a, a quarterback, a position that's covered a lot by the media, a simple Google search. I probably spent seven minutes of school. You can figure out the high level landscape of a school's quarterback picture. Do they have a returning starter coming back? Did they have musical chairs at the quarterback position that season? Do they have a promising up and coming youngster? You can sort through a lot of factors just by quick headline reading. From there, that allowed me to have a ranking system or a tier system. It was a three tier system. A level one school was on paper, this school looks like they would be a great great transfer option for me. Funny enough, Pitt was one of those level one schools and that meant they either had a graduating quarterback, they had big time public quarterback concerns at that position during the season, or there was just a noticeable void that was about to happen at the quarterback position for them the upcoming year. In Pitt's scenario, they had Nate Peterman, who was also a transfer quarterback, which that was important to note. Has the school taken transfers in the past because a school like USC takes very few transfers. A school like Pitt, takes a lot more transfers. That's good information to know. So in Pitt's scenario, Nate Peterman was there, transfer quarterback, he was graduating, going to the NFL, and their backup was also a redshirt senior. Putting the pieces together, that looks like an opportunity to go in there and win a job. A level two school was, on paper, it's not a obvious, fit, but there's like one factor that if, if it changed, maybe they would be a potential option. I don't want to rule them out completely. That could mean they have a new coach coming in. Their current quarterback might be maybe getting in some trouble at that point. They have a starting quarterback, but he's not playing that well. So maybe if the coach is looking to make a change, I could be a potential option. That was level two schools. And then level three schools were on paper. It does not look like anything's happening. That was how I laid out level one, level two, level three. And at the end of mapping it all out on the whiteboard, I had about 18 level one schools. And so I had been waiting for a few weeks to see which schools reached out to me. Back then it was Boston College, it was Fresno State, some NAIA schools, Pitt was one of them, which was obviously a factor of why I landed there. But now at that point it was, it was on my shoulders to be proactive with that. And I reached out to those 18 schools, the power of social media, found their recruiting director or um, whether I had a connection with a staff member at that school. Cause in my scenario, that was the beauty. I had four head coaches at that point. I had a lot of coaches that I had a relationship with. Even if they weren't my direct position coach, I at least knew them from passing them in the hallways, which maybe there's another tip. Wherever you are, just say hi to your coaches. Have every coach just at least know who you are. Because I know for me, when Boston College reached out to me in late October, the guy who reached out to me was the quality control linebacker coach at USC who had then moved to Boston College who reached out to me and said, Max, we're interested, man. I said what up to him in the hallway when we passed and it made that conversation a little more natural. But at that point, reached out to those 18 schools, had a few more schools reached out. But the reality is for my situation, at that point, we're talking mid-season. A lot of these schools, they're not worried about their quarterback for, for next year. They're worrying about keeping their job and winning on that Saturday. And I knew the deal, I wasn't naive to that. It wasn't like I was getting tons and tons of calls but for that very reason, that's why a few schools stuck out at that point. Now we're getting into late November and the, and the season's winding down. And that's where I had to make a difficult decision. And I'm glossing over some of the, the human aspect to a lot of this. Throughout those few months, transferring's tough, man. It, it's hard when, when things don't work out. It's hard when you have to find a new path. It really is uncharted waters and uncharted territory in the transfer process. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Because even though I'm talking more in like story time right here, I'm hoping that if you're watching this needing advice that you can at least pick 
pick up little tidbits from my story. But end of November, I made a tough decision at that point to, to leave the team. We were gearing up. We had just beat uh, UCLA. We were gearing up to, to go to the Rose Bowl. That was tough. I had to leave the team. Till this day, I was a captain on the 2016 team. I don't have a Rose Bowl ring, which sucks, but that's a decision I had to make. And I made that decision because I needed that time before Christmas, from basically December 1 to December 25th, before Christmas, to figure out where I was going to go to school. Because I knew at that point, I had three precious weeks to figure this thing out before teams get into bowl games, teams get into holidays. And before I know it, the next semester is going to start that January 3rd date. And I'll be out of luck if I don't, don't find anywhere. At that point, I had three schools in my mind. I basically had Pitt, Fresno State, and Boston College. But Pitt was really the only school that had a sense of urgency that matched mine in terms of, hey, let's get this thing done. For those that say, hey, Pitt seems kind of random, Max. Why, why, why'd you go there? At that point, Pitt was the number one offense in the country. They had beat Clemson that year. They had Nate Peterman and James Conner. They were super innovative with the jet sweep game. At that point, I'm like, if not Pitt, then what am I waiting on? My mindset when I was transferring was I had to go to a place that wanted me. That was huge. I needed to go to a place that not only wanted me, but I could play, was the depth chart friendly. And then third, and this is a factor that Michael overlooked, I needed to go to a place where we could win. I paid the price for that in, in 2016 in that my three starts, we got our asses handed to us. It's hard to, it's hard to find success as, as a quarterback when you're getting beaten up. So I needed to go to a place where I felt like I could win. And so at that point, Pitt had a sense of urgency I was excited, loved everything I was hearing about them. They were they were loving me up. It was great. And I took an official visit like December 7th or so, 5th, 7th, out to Pittsburgh. And official visits when you're a grad student are uh, a little bit different than when you're uh, when you're a high schooler. When you're a high schooler, you're, you're planning for the, the, the rest of your life, right? This is a huge decision. First time you're going away from home. Everything's great, right? The trips are awesome. Everyone's going to be a first-round NFL quarterback. When it's grad transfer, they cut the fluff real quick. At that point, there was less salesmanship and less kind of flashy stuff and more just, all right, coach, let's talk football. I remember taking a red eye from Los Angeles to Pittsburgh, flew in at 8 a.m. Pitt was having ball practice at that point. It's actually super cool. I uh, went straight into practice, red eye, so super tired. My brother went with me and Pitt shares a facility with the Steelers. And so there was some Steelers around at that point and the Steelers were getting up to practice right after uh, after Pitt was and Big Ben was there. Got to meet Mike Tomlin and, and Big Ben, which was awesome for a guy like me who wasn't stoked on, on where my football career was at at that point, that, that kind of gave me some excitement, gave me some life and, and made me pumped about what could be at Pitt. But then official visit was a great time. And another unique part is as a grad transfer, when you go out with the boys, uh, you, you buy the beer for, for everyone else versus when uh, when you're a high schooler, that world was, was totally new. But my official at Pitt was great. And I walked home from there saying, once again, if not Pitt, what am I waiting on? If you are transferring, you need to be realistic with what your options are. For me, I was a former five-star recruit. At a high school, I could have gone anywhere in the country I wanted. But at a college, I knew that wasn't the case. Well, I was fortunate in that when I was transferring, I still had division one options, but I wasn't naive to the fact that I wasn't going to be able to have my pick of the litter in terms of schools. And so if you're looking to transfer right now, it's so important to be realistic with what your options are and map it out on a whiteboard of, all right, realistically, I made one chess move out of high school. School. Now I have to make another chess move. I might not be able to get everything I was able to get out of high school. Can't be delusional with what the realities of your situation are. And sometimes dropping down a level is the best thing. For me, I, I thought about D1 AA schools. My best friend was playing at Eastern Washington. I thought about the idea of, hey, what would that look like? And, and they had a great quarterback, so, so that really wasn't going to happen. But once again, I knew at that point, I just needed to play football. I needed to get on the field. If that had to happen at the D1 AA level, I was ready for it. So I flew home feeling good about Pitt. I, I skipped one little step before that, about a week before I flew out to Pitt, uh, Matt Canada, Pitt's OC at the time. And it, this shows you the brutal nature of college coaching. And when people ask me, oh, Max, why don't you go into college coaching? My response is always, hey, the lifestyle is just too gnarly for me and too uncontrollable. Here's a perfect example. When Pitt was recruiting me, their offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, he has a lot of things on his plate. He took a flight out from Pittsburgh to LAX. That's about a four, four and a half hour 
hour flight. Flew out there to have an in-home visit with me. You can still do that when you're grad transferring. That's still legal. My brother lives close to LAX. And so he took a rental car, about 15 minutes, drove to my brother's house. Me, my brother, and Matt Canada had a conversation for about half an hour on my brother's couch, just talking football. And once again, it wasn't fluff. It wasn't sales pitch. It was just kind of getting to know each other. Talked for probably, yeah, 45 minutes. He got in a rental car, drove to LAX, and flew back home to Pittsburgh. And that was his day. Flew across the country, 45 minute conversation, college recruiting for you. But what got dicey is after I took my official visit at Pitt, Matt Canada, hence the fact that Pitt was the number one offense in the country, his name started getting thrown out there in potential job opportunities for him. He ended up taking a job at LSU, and I knew that was a thing. I knew that was in the works. It was unfortunate because at that point, that's a lot of uncertainty that I'm taking on by going to a program that did not have an offensive coordinator. But good on Pat Narduzzi and, 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 and what he was about. He called me and said, Max, we still want you. We're going to get an offensive coordinator that's, that's involved with, it, with a similar system, and we're going to keep you involved with the process. Long story short, I signed my financial aid agreement on December 19th, I think it was, and let Coach Narduzzi know that, hey, I'm coming to Pitt. And as I said out loud, some of you guys might be like, Max, really? Like You, you, you went into somewhere kind of blind? Like, what? You, you went somewhere else as your last shot, and you, and you went to a school where you didn't even know the offensive coordinator? I totally get how, and I, I probably would, would think something similar, but I just... I go back to put yourself in my shoes in that there's not like tons and tons of options. And at the time, Pitt was a top 25 team in the country. And so I'm thinking, hey, they're going to poach some other up and coming offensive coordinator, some other young offensive mind. And the reality is it wasn't like a ton of schools were showing me interest at that point. And that factor, I had it ingrained in my brain that I had to get somewhere for spring ball because I knew I needed the reps. I knew I wanted the reps to get acclimated to a program. So that was just front of mind for me. So I was just like, all right, sweet. Let's go do this thing. And this will be funny now that I'm filming this in 2021, but I watched the quarterbacks that Pitt had when I went on my official visit and I said, I can beat those guys out. What's funny about that is the guy that I said, hey, I could beat him out was Ben DiNucci. Good dude. Uh, we were cool the whole time. He ended up taking a big step that next spring, his redshirt sophomore year. They felt like, hey, he might not be progressing uh, the, the way we thought. And that's interesting, funny, because... Sure enough, fast forward a few years and Ben DiNucci this past fall started for the Dallas Cowboys. You football fans know that. So obviously he had some game, wasn't like he was a scrub. And I don't think that was a huge factor for me. I was used to that, man. Funny for you guys, looking back on my college career, I am the only scholarship quarterback that I have ever played with in college that did not make it to the NFL. We had some good quarterback rooms. Kenny Pickett's the one asterisk, but... He, he's going to the NFL. He's about to be a five-year starter at Pitt. And the last area I need to hit on about the transferring process, because I've talked all about football, but the reality is a huge portion of the transferring process is the academic educational side. And don't click away. If you're in the transfer process, gearing up to click away, and you think this is boring, this is the part you need to hear the most. Before I left USC, I was in grad school at that point. I graduated college in three years. I knew when I was in it that getting done with my undergrad as quick as possible would give me leverage. I got done in three years, but I also graduated high school early. So technically I got done in like two and a half years with my undergrad degree. So at the end of my redshirt sophomore year, at the bowl game of my redshirt sophomore year, I could have grad transferred. That gave me leverage. That gave me the ability to transfer and play right away without penalty. That's the first tidbit. The second tidbit is when I left SC, I was uh, getting my MBA from there. I don't want to pay for my MBA. I'd love to have SC pay for it, the whole thing. And so I went to Lynn Swan, went to Clay Helton. We had the, the, the decision makers of the athletic department get into the office and I tried to convince them to even though I was leaving the school to have them pay for the rest of my MBA. It didn't work out. They wouldn't pay for it, but I at least tried. Who knows? I'm still paying for that MBA right now. The payments have stalled because of COVID, but uh, I'll be back chipping away at that student debt shortly. So being strategic there, but then I also, when I was on my official visit at Pitt, a big part of grad transfer is, all right, what grad program are you gonna get admitted to? Most guys say, hey, I don't care, and the athletic department puts them in the easiest grad program. That's just the, the, the reality of what it is because 
Football's, uh, football's a lot to handle. Football's gonna end at some point, so start thinking about what degree you wanna get involved in. For me, it was a grad program. For most people, it's gonna be undergrad. Make sure you are being aware of what's at stake with the degree you're getting going down. I knew that I wanted that USC MBA. So I said, let me pause my MBA. I took a leave of absence from my USC MBA, and then on my official visit, they had me meet with the dean of the, of the Cats Business School at Pitt. And at that point, I'm the recruit. I got leverage on my side. If maybe I was past the admissions date or whatever, like the athletic department, and this is where it's fortunate to be at a D1 school and be in the position that uh, I was fortunate enough to be in, but I was aware that I was probably only gonna be in Pittsburgh for a single year. And so I wanted to go to Pitt and only do a year long master's program. So that gave me like one of three options. Marketing was cool. I liked, liked the idea of marketing and so I was able to meet with the Dean of the Business School and say, hey, I would love to be a part of this program. Is there any way that I can get approval to do that? And I know I'm not on the same timeline as the other students in the in the curriculum in that I didn't start in the fall. You had to like start in the fall. I was starting in, in January, but can I still do that program? Being the recruit had some leverage on my side, was able to make that happen. And so maybe that's not a transferring tip necessarily, but it certainly is a recruiting tip in that when you're getting recruited, if you're watching this video and, and, and you got some, some options and some schools wanting your services, leverage is on your side. Don't get arrogant with that. Don't be a tool, but understand that you can use that to your advantage. And so I went to Pittsburgh for a year, got my master's in marketing. Over the two years following, I was able to finish out my MBA. Go all in on football. Go all in on your sport. Be locked in, but don't be unaware to the fact that your sport will end at some point. Are you equipping yourself with options, with ammunition when that time comes? All right, so I just ran through my story, but now I wanna get through some just rapid fire advice, little nuggets that are important to keep in mind when you're transferring. First one, the grass is not always greener on the other side. This one is paramount. I can't tell you how many guys I played with throughout my career that something would go wrong. They would start saying, man, I'm gonna transfer. But the reality is when you transfer and you leave, a lot of those same issues, a lot of those same frustrations that you're having are still gonna be the case at the next school. You're still gonna have coaches that are gonna coach you hard. You're still gonna need to go to 6 a.m. lifts. You're still gonna have to do winter conditioning, summer conditioning, which sucks. You're still gonna have to go to class. So a lot of those issues that sometimes get players on the bad side of coaches are still gonna be factors at the next school you go to. Remember, Grass is not always greener on the other side. I already talked about the next one. Be realistic with your transfer options. If you don't know what your transfer options are, especially if you're talking maybe lower levels, consult with a coach, consult with a mentor, and make sure you keep those people close to you. I'm 26 right now, and I still talk to my high school coach. I believe the NCAA does have hotlines for that as well if you're in a total dark place. And hey, right there, if you're watching this video, you have no idea what to do, no idea who to reach out to, DM me on Instagram. I'll link my profile down below. Would love to help you out yeah, and, uh, and, and answer any questions. Next thing to remember, be wary of the rules. The transferring rules differ from level to level, from school to school, from conference to conference. Be wary of the rules and make sure you're informed at each step of the way. In this video, I did not go hardcore in terms of a step-by-step -step NCAA guide of how to transfer. Maybe that's a video for the next time. Make sure your grades are right. Make sure you're passing classes, not dropping classes, and have your units. Next thing to remember, do not burn bridges. All all of my immediate transfer options were as a result of relationships that I had fostered earlier in my life. I mentioned Boston College, Fresno State, and Pitt. Boston College, I already talked to you about that scenario. Fresno State, the guy that recruited me to USC had moved to Fresno State and there was a relationship there. He was familiar with my game, so that was an option. And then at Pitt, when my new offensive coordinator got hired in January, once I was already on campus at Pitt and Sean Watson was hired, good coach, good dude, he had worked with my running back coach at USC and my running back coach had called him and vouched for me. I didn't even know that. He told me at a later date that that happened, but it showed me that this football world is connected and it's smaller than you think. So relationships are key, they're key in life, key in football as well, don't burn bridges. I would make sure to cast a wide net. If you shrink your options geographically, that can be tough. And I know that factor nets out for, for different people in different ways. Some people have to be close to home, I respect that, I totally get that. But just a general approach of casting a wide net, multiple states, multiple leagues, multiple divisions, is a sound strategy to not pigeonhole 
yourself and limit your uh, limit your options. And everything else I have jotted down, I've pretty much already covered in this video. I hope that this was both entertaining for people that are familiar with my story, but also informational for people who have no idea who I am and feel like they're stuck when trying to navigate this transfer process. And for anyone out there that's transferring, it's hard. It's it's not an exact science. I'm vocal across all my social media platforms and saying that the fall of 2016 was the hardest part of my life. When things didn't work out at SC and the amount of investment that did not pay off, there's a level of pain that, that, that comes with that. But I'll say this, there is a certain beauty in starting fresh somewhere and turning the page. And there is a certain beauty in being able to look yourself in the mirror and fall asleep at night, knowing that even though things didn't work out at the previous stop, that you gave it you're all, you went about your business the right way and you can hold your head high leaving a program or leaving a school. Don't be the guy walking out of a program bitter, calling people out on social media, being poor me and all that. That does no one any good. Even if you're justified for being bitter and upset, it does you absolutely no good to fall down that trap. So if you're in the transfer process, hang in there, take advantage of the times we're living in. It's 2021, it's social media. Not everything has to be word of mouth. Take advantage of the resources online and the people you can reach online, whether you know them well or maybe not, that can help you get going down the path you need to be on. But thanks for watching this video. Drop a comment down below with your favorite part or a question you still have, or maybe an area that I touched on that you would love for me to make a full video on. Let me know down below in the comments. But I thank you guys for spending some time with me and I'll see you back here next time.